This section is over one-sided limits. So, so far we've um, worked through finite limits, through infinite limits, and now we're obviously moving on to one-sided limits. Before I give you the definition of a one-sided limit, let's go back and review what an actual limit is. So, the limit as x approaches a of our function f of x is equal to l if our function gets closer and closer to l as our x value gets closer and closer to a. Now, we know the difference between limits, as we see here, and actual functions. If I wanted to know a function evaluated at a, that would be at the particular point itself. But the limit actually wants to know what's happening close to that particular point, not at the point all on its own. Now, the preface into the one-sided limits is if the limit from the left equals the limit from the right, then that limit exists and it is equal to L. If the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right, then the limit D and E, or does not exist. So we keep talking about this limit from the left and the limit from the right. Well, that is exactly what a one-sided limit is. So it looks the same as the definition of a limit, or at least the notation, except for one small change. If we see a to the negative, that actually means we're looking at the left-hand side, or the left limit. If we see x is approaching a to the positive, then that means we're looking at a from the right-hand side, or the right limit. So if our limits from the left and the limits from the right don't match, that means we can evaluate the limit from the left and the limit from the right separately. And they can give us different values as we see here. So just an expansion on that last slide, just like I said, when the limit from the left is equivalent to the limit from the right, then the limit as x approaches a all in itself is equal to L. And that means the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit is equal to L all at the same time. But if the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right, that's when our limit as x approaches A in general does not exist, meaning the limit from the left has one answer and the limit from the right has a second answer. So we're just looking at the limits from the left and the right separately. And this should be a breeze from you because in fact we've already done this to tell us what the limit as x approaches a of f of x is in general. So let's start the same place that we've started with the previous sections is by visuals. Let's get these visuals down and hopefully that will help us with the actual function notation. So I have the limit as x is approaching 12 in my first example, but notice in part b I'm looking as x is approaching 12 from the left hand side and as x is approaching 12 from the right-hand side. So I want to figure out where x is equal to 12. If I trace my graph from the left-hand side, notice it gets closer and closer to this value here, and that value looks to be about 3, meaning my left-hand limit is equal to 3. 12 to the negative power means my left-hand limit. Now, if I want to look at my right-hand limit here, I find 12, and I trace it from the right-hand side. And notice as I'm tracing it from the right-hand side, I get closer and closer to this value here, which is also the same y value, which is also equal to 3. Since my left-hand limit and my right-hand limit match, that means my limit exists, and my limit is that same answer there. So since everything meets up at this place right here, that means all of my answers are equal to that y value, which is equal to 3 on this graph. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can do the second one here. The limit as x is approaching 3, which is part A. Part B, x is approaching 3 from the left. And part C, x is approaching 3 from the right-hand side. So let's start from the left-hand side. Let's start from part B. If I figure out where 3 is, it looks right here. And if I trace that up to my graph, it looks like I'm there. 
So if I trace it from the left-hand side, I get closer and closer to this value right here, which is my y value of 9. So the answer to part B is 9, because that is what my graph is approaching from the left-hand side. Now let me do part C. X is approaching 3 from the right-hand side. I trace it closer and closer to the right-hand side. And notice I also end up at the same y value over here, which is also 9. Since the answers to part B and C match, that means my limit as x is approaching 3 in itself exists, and the answer is also 9. So I picked these two as my first examples because I don't have anything tricky going on there. Let's look at a couple more examples. In the first set, I want to look at x is approaching 2, so my x value of here. Both the limit in general, which is A, from the left, which is B, and from the right, which is C. And then the second set, I want the limit as x is approaching negative 4, which is over here. Again, in general, from the left and from the right. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up with the answers to this on your own. Okay, these are also easy ones because there isn't really anything tricky happening here. So let me start with um, the first set, part B. If I look at 2 from my left-hand side, I trace it, and it gets closer and closer to this value here. So my y value is equal to 1. In part C, I'm still looking at 2, but from the right-hand side, and when I reach 2, I end up here, which is also my y value of 1. Since my answers to B and C match, that means my overall limit is that answer, and my overall limit matches at that y value, which is equal to 1. Okay, moving on to the second set. Notice there's lots of negatives, especially when I look at part B. X is approaching negative 4 to from the left. And that's what I see a lot of people do as a mistake here, is if they want x is approaching 2 from the negative, they sometimes think that means x is approaching negative 2. These are actually two different things. This means I'm looking at 2, positive 2 from my left-hand side. And this means I'm looking at negative 2. So they would be looking at different places on the graph. Positive 2 from my left-hand side, that's the first representation. And negative 2 here, that would be the second representation. So make sure you keep those negatives where they are and know what they actually mean. So moving on from my side rant there, let's go back to part B. X is approaching negative 4 from the left. So I find negative 4, I'm tracing it from the left. And that puts me here, and that y value is equal to 6. Now negative 4 from the right. So that puts me here, which my y value is equal to 6. And since the answers to both part B and C match, that means my limit in general is 6. Now I do have a hole at 6, but since my graph from the left and from my right both meet up at that hole, that means my limit still meets at 6. If I wanted what my function what defined was, that would be this value up here. But I don't care at that point itself. I care about what's happening around that point. So that's my answer here. OK, I have one more set of visual examples. I'm looking at negative 2, again, in general, from the left and from the right, and 6, in general, from the left and from the right. So pause the video and see if you can get the answers to these guys on your own. So let's start at negative 2 from the left. I find negative 2. If I trace it from my left, that puts me at this value right here, which my y value is 2. If I go from negative 2 from the right, that means I'm going here. That means I end up with this y value right there, which is about negative 1. So if I want, as x is approaching negative 2 in general, Notice my left and my right don't meet up at negative 2, meaning my limit itself doesn't exist, so my answer to part A is D and E. 
Okay, and then the second example that I have here, X is approaching 6 from the left. I find 6 from the left. It ends up here, and that Y value is 4. From the right, it ends up here, and that Y value is 2. And so if I want the limit as X is approaching 6 in general, my left hand and my right hand limit don't meet up. And so my answer there is does not exist. Again, notice my function is defined at a different place here, but I don't really care about where it's defined at. I just care about where my left goes and where my right go, and do they actually match in the middle, and they don't. So now you've got quite a few visual examples of what is meant by a left hand and a right hand limit, aka a one-sided limit. And remember the notation of that is a to the negative power means the limit on the left side, and a to the positive power means the limit from the right hand side. So that's where this video ends, and in the next video we'll figure out how to do the answers to these if they don't give us a graph, if they give us a function instead.